What's going on smart people? For this video, it's all about ODU. More specifically, it's all about the physics department at ODU. If you're not familiar with ODU, it is the school that I graduated from. It's where I got my bachelor's degree in physics. And today I want to give my final thoughts and opinions of the physics department. Now this is just for the department. It's not for the university as the whole, but let's go ahead and kick things off with the courses. Now I've made a video on the courses I've taken as a physics major, so I'm not going to go too in depth with this, but let's just say the courses are pretty standard. You've got your ENM, your quantum, classical, computational, lab, all that good stuff. But not all physics majors have to take the same classes. Why? Because there's different tracks at ODU. So for example, I was track A, which means that I wanted to go straight to grad school afterwards. So I had to take more physics classes than say a track B or a track C student. So track A students typically have to take a good amount more physics classes than the other tracks. In addition to that, you also have to take your 400 level electives. So there's things like atomic physics, accelerators, nuclear physics. The only thing is that they're not offered every single semester. One of them probably is, so for example, I took a course in atomic physics, the next semester was a course in accelerator physics, my last internship was in accelerator physics, so I wanted to try something new, so I did atomic, but you didn't really have that much of a say, it was pretty much, this is what's offered, take it or wait another semester. Or so I thought, you see, huge props goes out to the upcoming juniors and seniors in the ODU physics department because they sort of banded together said we want a course in theoretical mechanics and now next semester theoretical mechanics is being offered. So it's a bit late for my case but it looks like now the students have a say in the electives that are being taught. So I think that that is just so cool that the department is listening for what the students want to be taught. My only critique with the classes has to do with the fact that you know of course there's going to be a distribution of performances. I don't know if it's track A students doing better because you know they have to so that they can get into grad school which widens the distribution of grades and, and things like that or if it's the fact that just ODU is an easier university to get into for undergrad than maybe other universities. I'm not quite sure. But one thing that I've noticed a couple times, not by the same professor, is a professor skipping over material from an undergraduate physics textbook like Griffiths or something because they thought it was too hard for us. And they might say something like, you'll see this in grad school, or if you're not going to go to grad school, then I just saved yourself from having to, you know, suffer through a bad grade. But me personally, I would have rather still seen the difficult material. And my thought process for this has to do with the fact that these grades for the upper level physics classes are never or almost never at an absolute scale right doing well sort of means doing well relative to other people and I noticed this because I noticed that specifically within the track A students we were all competing to try to get the highest grade and we would all see who got the highest grade and sometimes no one would get an objectively like an A but we would still end up with an A in the class and we've had professors openly say that sometimes these grades depend on the distribution of people who attend class, do their homework, and still do well relative to the other people on the exams. So in my opinion, pulling the hard material won't really help anything because the distribution of how people perform is still going to be the same. The shape of it is still going to be the same. It just might be shifted a little bit if it is objectively too hard for an undergraduate student. And this way you could still point out the sections of the distribution of grades and say this one gets an A, this group gets a B, and so on. And in this way the people who do badly don't do even worse now because again it's still just looking at the distribution, not the absolute grade. I guess what I'm getting at is I don't like thinking that a professor took something out of the material because they thought we didn't have what it took to understand that material. I would have rather shown you that, you know, for better or for worse. So I just spent a whole bunch of time talking about something that didn't really pop up that much, but I thought it was still worth mentioning. But moving on to professors, physics professors at ODU, in my opinion, the physics professors at ODU are just uh, second to none. These are professors that are coming from Cornell, Cambridge, MIT, and these professors go the extra mile consistently. I've had professors respond to desperate emails asking for clarification on something at like 1 in the morning. I've had professors who hold optional recitations on their own time at the university just so that we could practice the material after being taught it. So one professor, we had class on Monday and Wednesday, and then on Fridays, he would hold an optional recitation that you didn't have to go to where we would just go and do practice problems. The same professor was also the one that pointed out that I thought way too much like a mathematician and I had a really hard time putting the math in terms of physics. And uh, so for example, there would be, it was for e and &M, and there would be parts where we'd have to go through these really messy integrals and I'd brute force my way through them and then they would end up canceling out at the end. He would let me go through the pain. He would let me go through it and say, why did that happen? Does it make sense why that happened? And then kind of building off of that whole recitation style, my thermodynamics class, my professor 
firmly believed that no one could pay attention for longer than like 30 minutes. So at the end of the 30 minute lecture, everyone up to the whiteboards and we practiced pretty much what we learned that day. So it was like a common tendency for the professors to let you struggle with it, let you work through the problem on yourself, but still have the comfort of them like kind of being there in the background. It's sort of all coming back to me right now because my computational physics professor did the exact same thing where he would hold optional recitation days where we would come in and we would just practice coding. ODU doesn't offer a course in general relativity. That was one of the things that I kind of was upset about. One of my professors would have weekly meetings with me where we would, I would come in at like 9 in the morning and we would just talk about general relativity. He had lecture notes available online from I guess when he taught an astrophysics course and we would just go through them. So the list goes on and on with uh, how far these professors go just to help you out. So I'm going to move on to like research opportunities with ODU. This is starting to sound like a sales pitch so I'm sorry that I don't have more negative things to say about ODU. But uh, I can attribute my first and my second internship, research internship, to going to ODU. Um, my supervisor for the last one was one of my professors, and my supervisor for this one was one of my professors. The first internship was an in REU, which stands for Research Experience for Undergrads, which I've actually made a video on how to apply for those. But in case you're not lucky enough to get funded research internships throughout your undergrad, all physics majors at ODU also have to do what's called a senior thesis project which is where effectively a professor takes you under their wing and shows you how to do research sort of in their field. You do a baby research project and these can range anywhere from a semester to an entire year. The one that I did was through my atomic physics professor and we did uh, research in theoretical atomic physics and at the end you do like a little presentation, write a 20 page paper and then you're done with it. Now it can be a little intimidating approaching a professor and asking if you can work with them to do a senior thesis project. So one thing that I think ODU could probably implement in the future would do would be something like holding a colloquium or something where all of the professors who are doing senior thesis projects sort of give a sales pitch to say this is my research, this is what I'm interested in, if you want to do research with me just get in contact. And I think that would make it a lot less uh, intimidating of a task. Or if not a colloquium, then if the professor is actually like holding lectures that semester, just at the beginning of the semester just say, hey by the way I take senior thesis students. So that's just an idea. But the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, guidance. So the academic advisors at ODU, first off, ODU is in Norfolk, Virginia, home of the largest naval base in the United States. So a lot of people that go to ODU are on very strict time schedules. And in my experience, these, uh, these academic advisors are more than willing to work with you on that. And that extends to the people who are in the military, their relationship with the professors. So I had a friend who was in the Navy, and uh, he wasn't able to go to the class at the time that it was offered, so they let him do independent study and still get the credit. I'm not in the military, but it seems like the physics department is very flexible with those who are on that tight kind of schedule. Physics majors are also required to meet with their academic advisor once a semester before they're allowed to register for classes, which is actually really useful so that they can suggest what classes to take. Uh, because it's not entirely rigid, like you have to take these classes every semester, there's some wiggle room. And I think one problem that is actually in the process of being fixed is I think they used to be a little bit too liberal with the classes you could get an override to get into if you didn't really need to get the override. For example, all physics majors have to take this 400 level elective and the two options were atomic physics one semester or accelerator physics the following semester. I didn't want to take accelerator physics, so I got an override to take atomic even though I hadn't yet had quantum mechanics and I shouldn't have been allowed to do that and I don't think you can get away with doing that anymore. And these academic advisors aren't just disconnected from the student body themselves, they're often professors themselves and in my case my academic advisor was also the supervisor for the Society of Physics students. So after all that I think my opinion of ODU's physics department is pretty clear. Uh, it's pretty one-sided actually. So if you're a high school student and you're about to apply to university and you think you might want to be a physics major I think you should check out ODU. This sounds like the part where the person says, like, I couldn't imagine going anywhere else, but I did go somewhere else first. Initially, I went to VCU and then I transferred to ODU. VCU is a great school, but transferring was the best decision I ever made. But no one at ODU asked me to make this video. I was just planning on giving my thoughts, and it sort of just turned into a promotional video. Um, but it's the least I can do because they've done so much for me. But I've said all that I want to say. If you guys end up applying and getting in and going to ODU, tell them I said hi. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about it. And I'll see you guys there.